Is cleaning alone an effective method to eliminate analog stick drift or do the analog sticks need to be replaced? That's what I'm gonna find out in this video and it's sponsored by BW100. BW100 is an electronic contact cleaner and they said that their product is great for fixing analog stick drift just by cleaning alone. So I decided to put that to the test by trying to clean analog sticks and all sorts of devices. In my last video sponsored by BW100, you guys noticed that this is an awfully big can and you'll probably never use it all. Since that video, they've come out with a much smaller can and I'll put a link for this down in the description. Now let's get to cleaning analog sticks and see if cleaning alone will fix them. I'm gonna first start out by checking out this cool clear DualShock 4 controller. I've never actually worked on a clear one before and I have to say I really love the look of it but let's see if and how badly the analog sticks are drifting. Okay so we've got constant movement on both of the analog sticks and they're just kind of both wiggling back and forth a whole bunch. So this will be a great one to test the BW100 with, so let's get it sprayed in there and see if it'll work. Now the temptation is to just spray the cleaner right down in here in hopes that it will get down to the analog sticks. Unfortunately, if you look right here, there's kind of like a shield, this bottom of the analog stick cover, this thumb stick, is basically covering the entire analog stick itself, so that's not gonna really do us any good. So in order to effectively clean this analog stick, I'm gonna have to take it apart enough to get down to this little green piece right here, this potentiometer. Once I have it down to that, I can spray the BW100 right into it, and then we'll see how well it cleans. And now I'm down to a place where I can really give this a good cleaning. I'm gonna spray the cleaner right down in here, and then I'm also gonna spray it down into each of these potentiometers, and the same on this side. Now one of the things I love about BW100 is it is non-conductive, so you can spray it right down on electrical circuits, and it won't cause any problems. It won't cause any shorts or anything like that. And the other thing that's great about it is it is quick to evaporate. So all of this that I'm doing right now, I'm just kind of running the potentiometers back and forth. And then the BW100 will be evaporating as I do that. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a little bit and then spray some more in there and then do it some more just to make sure we get a nice good cleaning on these potentiometers. Now that I have these thoroughly cleaned, I'm gonna put this back together so we can test it and see if that helped. And now I have it back together and ready to test. Let's see what it shows on the screen. So here we go. And it looks like we have just a tiny bit of movement, basically none on this one, just a tiny bit here. So I would definitely call this a success on this controller. I'll probably even clean them out just a little bit more and then also replace the thumbstick caps just to make sure this one's in really good condition. Like I said, I love the clear controller look and I'll probably just keep this around just so I can use it in other videos, but I'd say so far BW100 is one for one. Up next, we have controller number two. That is an Xbox One controller. Let's see what it's doing up on the screen. Okay, and you can immediately see this right analog stick just drifts up. Let's move it around a little bit. And also the left analog stick has moved over to the right. So these two analog sticks definitely need to either be cleaned or be replaced. Let's see how well BW100 does to clean them and then we'll test it again and see if that works. And once again, in order to get down to the analog sticks themselves, we need to remove the thumb sticks. And to do that, we need to remove this outer shell. These analog sticks actually have a bunch of hair and stuff around them, so I'm gonna clean those all off before we do the cleaning down inside them. I'm gonna get as much as I can with a pair of tweezers here. Now I've got those cleaned out a little bit, now I can bring in the BW100. The analog sticks on this Xbox One controller are nice and clean now. Let's get it plugged in, 
see what it does. And once again, as you can see, there is basically zero drift. These numbers are not moving at all. So we have another controller that was fixed just by cleaning with BW100. Let's move to controller number three, which is a special edition Xbox One controller. Let's first test it and see what the analog sticks look like. Okay, and the left analog stick is all over the place. It won't even go to the middle. So that one's definitely gonna give BW100 a run for its money. I'm gonna open it up and give it a good cleaning and see if that'll fix it. One easy way to make your controller last longer and reduce analog drift is to just keep them clean and also wash your hands before you use them. This is the analog stick that was giving us the trouble. I am gonna just go ahead and clean both of them since I'm already inside. So far, I've just been showing you how to spray the cleaner on the outside of these potentiometers. If you have one that's more difficult to clean or seems like it doesn't wanna get clean, I'm gonna show you one thing that you can try. There are little tabs right down here on the sides of these potentiometers, and there's little tabs right at the top. So if you need to, you can actually pry these off very, very, very carefully because they are super easy to break. Probably don't need to pry them off any more than that. That will just allow us to get as much of the cleaner in as we can. It'll also allow us to flush out any larger debris. One of the nice things about the BW100 is that it's in a spray can, so it can really just spray down in there and get as far as it possibly can down inside these small parts. Now that the BW100 has been sprayed in there and has been soaking for a little bit, I'm just gonna snap this back on. There we go. And then do the same, just move the analog stick back and forth to get those potentiometers nice and clean. Since we're having a problem with the up and down movement on this analog stick, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this potentiometer and spray this one out too. Hopefully that will get out anything that might be in there that's causing the problem. Now that both of these are cleaned out, I'm gonna plug it in and test it and see if that did the trick. Oh, unfortunately that did not fix this left analog stick. So it is just stuck right at the top. So let's take this potentiometer apart and figure out what exactly is going on. So we've gotten it taken apart enough to get to the potentiometers. This is the one we need to remove. So I am going to desolder these joints right here. And now with those pins desoldered, we can pull off this potentiometer and have a look at it. And now that we're under a microscope, we can see exactly why this one was not working. This trace right here is just totally worn out on both sides. There's just not enough material here to carry any sort of electrical signal through these contacts. These contacts are also just completely worn out. There's no way possible this one would have ever been fixed because we need this material for it to send a signal through this connection. So while BW100 definitely didn't work to get this one working, there's no cleaner that ever would because this is just totally worn out. So I'm gonna put a new one in and then we'll test it and see whether it works. Now I got it all back together, let's check the analog sticks. And as you can see, they're almost directly dead center and absolutely no movement with these numbers right here. So that definitely fixed this one. Let's move on to some Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Now I have this Switch that I've had laying around for a while because I think it's this analog stick that I need to fix or replace. Let's test it. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Everywhere works fine except for when you go up. So first, I'm gonna try just spraying some BW100 right around here. This probably won't do much because there is kind of a dust shield on the analog stick, but I'm gonna give it a try and see if it does anything at all. Now also, I do have to say, even though I did clean this with it connected to the switch and all turned on, I always recommend to just turn everything off and then do the cleaning. That just avoids any potential problems with any liquids getting inside the controller. Whoa, actually, that seemed to work just fine. Look at that. Okay, so this analog stick is working fine now, just with cleaning it 
from spraying BW100 just right around the outside. That is super easy cleaning. Well, that's encouraging. Let's move on to the next Joy-Con. So I actually have another blue one here. I don't know for sure that any of these Joy-Cons I'm about to test don't work because I just bought them for this video specifically. So let's test it and see if it works. Okay, we do have some movement right there. It doesn't work too bad, but it definitely doesn't go all the way to the center. When I push it that way and then it goes back, it kind of misses the center. So I'm gonna try cleaning this one from the outside and see if that'll fix this problem. So almost every time it will return to the center, but every once in a while it won't quite go all the way to the center. I'm guessing this analog stick is fairly worn, but let's take it apart and have a look at it and see what it looks like on the inside. So the first thing I see that's concerning on this Joy-Con is we've got a pink liquid damage indicator. This should be white with some red dots. When it turns pink, that means that this Joy-Con has come in contact with some liquid. So I'm guessing that's probably why the analog stick isn't working, but let's tear it all the way down and see if that's true. All right, and I can even see some watermarks on this analog stick. Let's get it out and take it apart. So unfortunately, I can't get the entire analog stick under my microscope so you can see it all. But from what you can see, you can just see there's just all this dirt and debris just stuck everywhere inside this analog stick. And there is definitely liquid in here. That's what this brown spot is. I think that's probably what all of these little dots are right here. And it looks like even on these carbon tracks, this is where the analog stick picks up the signal so it can determine what position the analog stick is in. All of these have a whole bunch of debris on them. I do see that this one up here looks like it may be just totally worn out. It looks like I can see right through the carbon pad. So I think this one is probably just totally worn out and no amount of cleaning will get this one to work. And with it wet like this, you can see that this pad has totally been worn all the way through. And that is probably the main cause of the analog stick malfunction. Like I said, it does look like there's been liquid in here too, so that definitely didn't help, but I think this is the main problem. So unfortunately, that analog stick, no matter what you use to clean it, would never work because it's just worn out. Let's move on to another Switch Joy-Con and see if we can get it working just by cleaning it. So next, I've got this yellow Joy-Con. This one is for the right side. Let's first see if there's anything wrong, then we'll see if we can fix it. Oh, there we go. That one is definitely drifting. And this one seems to work perfectly after cleaning. I'm guessing what may have happened is maybe some dirt or debris got in on these little pads right here and caused a faulty connection. Next, let's try red one. Okay, and there's absolutely no problem with this red Joy-Con, so let's move on to another red Joy-Con. Okay, this red Joy-Con is working great. Let's move on to a gray one. Okay, this one doesn't work too bad, but it does take a little while to get it to move back to the middle. Now, one important thing I want you to notice on these Joy-Cons is there's this little dust cover right here. And if you need to, you can lift this dust cover and then spray the cleaner right down inside the Joy-Con right there. When it's on here, it kind of protects it. If you spray it on here, it'll still get down in there, but it'll get down in there a lot better if you just lift this up and then spray it down in there. And this gray one is now working pretty much perfectly. This video was sponsored by BW100, as I said in the beginning, but the reason that I accepted this sponsorship is because I do believe in the product. As you saw in this video, BW100 fixed every analog stick that only needed cleaning and was not mechanically worn out. So thank you BW100 for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link down in the description if you would like to purchase some for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.